Hello, my name is Darren Thomas and I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. In this video, we're going to be looking at group roles, group sizes, and group effectiveness when, of course, dealing with groups. So let's go ahead and see what we can learn. And so you can see those are our three topics, the roles in groups, the, size, the sizes of groups, and the effectiveness of groups. So let's talk about group roles. So generally there are three roles in a group, you know, give or take, and they're more orientation than they are roles. I guess that might be a better way to put it. So you have a task orientation, you have a relations orientation, and you have a self orientation. So when you are talking about a task orientation, you are talking about individuals who are focused on getting things done. You are talking about individuals who are, very, very focused on achieving group goals. That is what they care about. That is what drives and motivates them. Moving on to the next one, relations orient orientation. These are people who are more focused on social harmony, group cohesiveness, people getting along and you know s smooth relationships. And of course, this can clash with the task orientation individuals who want to get things done, perhaps at the expense of social harmony and the general happiness of the group. And so there's gonna be some conflict there. As the relation-oriented individuals focus more on making sure people are happy, they might sacrifice achieving group goals and getting things done, which can of course lead to frustration. The last orientation is self-orientation. And these are people who are focused on their own personal goals. And they see groups as a tool for achieving their own personal ambitions. So this is kind of the Machiavellian view, if you will. Uh, of course, this is considered often the most uh, unhealthy type of orientation in the group, where it's all me, me, me. But as you are trying to build successful groups, you want to try to find a balance between task-oriented individuals and relational-oriented individuals. That is where you have balance. And of course, you want to try to exclude the self-oriented individuals because they're not really uh, team players, if you will. But a good balance, a good mix between task and uh, relations is the best way. Now, if it's all task, you're going to have a lot of tension in the group as everybody's fighting to, you know, do the best and how people feel is ignore. And of course, the same thing can happen if you have a group that's highly relational in nature, where it's all about making sure everybody, everybody's happy at the expense of getting things done to the point where maybe nothing gets done. You also, when you are trying to work with groups in your classroom and you're trying to help students, you have to think about the size of the group as well. So generally, as the size goes up, the interaction goes down between students. They're not able to interact as much because there's so many other people com competing for attention and oftentimes one voice begins to dominate the others. Also, the next two bullets are kind of related to each other. When the size of a group increases, the ideal of personal responsibility goes down. There's always this ideal in the back of your mind, if you worked in large groups, that someone else is going to take care of something. And generally what happens is, is that everybody thinks that and it doesn't get done. So you have to make sure that when you are trying to develop groups that if the groups are larger, you have to keep accountability high. And of course, as the group size increases, social loafing, which is another term for basically personal responsibility, begins to go up as well. People think they can kind of coast and not have to do anything, and, and um, they're not able to focus and uh, get things done. That's where it can be a serious problem. And so again, you have to be aware of the size. Now, in my own personal experience, experience I don't like to have groups bigger, bigger than three or four. Beyond four, you're gonna, I start to see these problems pop up, especially the, uh, the personal responsibility and the social loafing. People stop working as groups get larger and larger. Now, effectiveness. So what can you do to make sure your groups are humming along and they're not having major problems in terms of getting on, getting on task and achieving goals? Well, there's several things you could do. First of all, you got to have you have to set up some general rules about how to interact within a group. And this can be done often most efficiently through demonstration rather than talking about it. So you might want to demonstrate the various um, 
uh, roles that people might, might have in the group, like a leader or a secretary or whatever, sh demonstrate how they can interact with each other, how they work together, go over the rubric, whatever it is that you need, that they need to know so that they can be successful within the criteria that you set. Of course, you also need to provide directions. And the difference between direction and rules is, rules are for conduct and directions are for how to complete the assignment. And so you have to explain whatever it is you want them to do whether it's a project or a paper or a presentation, what are the expectations for that particular assignment? And of course, groups also need to have some sort of autonomy of their own. And that involves, of course, setting their own rules and having their own way of doing things. So they have to have their own personal rules. And of course, you as the teacher have to find ways to maintain the cohesiveness of the group. And that has to do with, you know, a frequency of meetings. They have to meet. They have to interact with each other on a regular basis. If there's not enough frequency of meetings, the group kind of dissolves because the people are not interacting with each other. Also, and we talked about this earlier, you have to be concerned with the size of the group. If a group is too big, it starts to become a problem. If a group is too small, the work might be too much for the team that, that is available. So you have to find a balance between those two. And of course, you gotta have clear goals, which is kind of connecting with directions and, and rules at the top of the slide. So, to wrap up this video, we essentially talked about three things. We talked about the roles that you can find within groups, in terms of more like the orientation or how people see group work. You got the task-oriented people, relationship-oriented people, and the self-oriented people, and how you have to deal with those. Try to find a balance between task and relational, and try to exclude or discourage self-orientation. We also talked about the size and how size affects interaction, responsibility, and also social loafing. These are things to be aware of because you want your students to be on task when they're in groups. And of course, we also talked about the effectiveness, how to increase the effectiveness, maintaining, maintaining cohesiveness through frequent meetings. Um, also through the, the various other things that we talked about, such as you know, directions and, and providing goals, and setting clear rules. These are all things that can help your groups to be more effective and thus to uh, produce um, output or complete assignments at a hopefully a higher quality. So my name is Darren Thomas. I am the Director of Educational Research Techniques. Thank you for watching and take care.